Word is from Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 to 6. Today's word is from Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 to 6. So let's read them together. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a cup, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the cup and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and present fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Amen. Hello. 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 Good Sunday. And how was your week? Uh, did you get some left in these holidays? Okay. This is the middle of the lunar new year holiday, Solal. So there are some people who couldn't be with us because they are busy now. But I believe that they are worshiping God in their own places, remembering this time. May God be honored in our lives so that we can live a life as a Christian in the world. So also, I hope that uh, the grace will be with those who worship here and that God's new strength will be given during the last of the holiday season. So I hope that all of us can be the ones who worship today by thanking that God. We talk about why do we worship until last week. We should worship the God who created this world and who loved us and saved us from the sin. Also, in order to get the energy from God's words to live as a Christian, we gather in churches to worship God. These reasons are the driving force that allows us to worship. But what if we don't know well about it? If we lack awareness of God as a creator or God as a savior, we don't feel need to worship him. Or if we don't get energy to live our lives through such word of God, we don't find we won't find him who seems to be unhelpful to live our lives. This is a very bad way of faith, and it can lead to great sin by mistake. That sin is called idolatry. What? How can it lead it to idolatry? 
This might sound a little jumpy, but the word we learned today is telling us about it. The background of today's story is the story of an Israeli people who escaped from Egypt <laughs> and were heading to the land of Canaan to receive God's word and that God's command. Moses left all the Israelites behind and went up to Mount Sinai to face God alone. The conversation between God and Moses was very long and the length was enough to devote seven chapters to the Bible alone. No one could see the top of the mountain because it was covered with cloth. Clouds, and Moses became invisible to the people of Israel for a very long time. Then Moses entered the clouds as he went on up the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. And in that situation, something should never have happened. Happened. There were Aaron, Hor, and many elders in the camp of Israel where Moses left. These were those who were trusted by Moses to take charge of the Israelites. And no one could say that their fate was dim. But after about 40 days of silence, the Israelites birthed their anxiety before them. In common sense, there was no way to know what would have happened to him in a place where there was a shortage of food, of housing, and the dangers of wild animals. So, from the pers perspective of the Israelites, they could not wait for their leader. After the time to decide, the people now officially asked Aaron for a solution. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us, brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. In the Bible, Aaron's instructions follow immediately after this birth, but I think there must have been a very big gap between these two verses. Aaron was a man who witnessed the process of escaping from Egypt near Moses. Because he witnessed the miracle of God, he could not easily accept the demands of the people. In his anguish, there was a choice between faith in God and the present reality. And eventually, Aaron decided. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. It didn't take long to make gold idols. All at once, people gathered what they had and made a God that would never disappear. In their perspectives, it seems that they were going to pursue the vain by relying solely on words. But now, a God they could see will lead them. 
Beyond this obvious idolatry, they commit even greater sins. <coughs> Then they say, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. All the things that God had done so far were passed on, the, passed on to the idols they had created. It was an ungrateful sin that took away all, the, all of God's glory. The history of grace and salvation that they had received quickly lost its subject. Idolatry isn't just about believing and worshiping other gods. The reason idolatry is really dangerous is to shift, it shift all the grace we have received to others. It is a change of priority and a change of direction of our life. It denies the worship we've been offered, the prayers we've been requested, the praise and dedication, dedication we've been give, giving. And this is not limited to God-like beings. Um, we shouldn't think we are not idolizing. Because we believe in God. What we shouldn't misunderstand is that the Israelis made the golden calf not to serve it, but to worship God through it. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. What did Aaron say? He proclaimed the Lord's festival. They used the golden cup for the worship of the Lord. Therefore, this behavior could have created a greater sins and greater danger of not recognizing their sins. They just worshiped God through they used some idol. But from what has been said, we know all too well that it is not worship that God rejoices in. After all, Israel's sin was about not to serve other gods, but not to obey God's will. So therefore, this is the following questions to be asked of us through their stories. Are you worshiping that God is pleased with? We are learning what kind of worship God is pleased, but if there is something in our hearts that precedes, precedes God and our lives are being changed by it, we are not worshiping at God's will. For some, it can be a work. For some, relationships, money, and honor. Of course, you can worship God through them, but if we don't have a heart that only looks at God, the things that help us with our worship will become idols. The reason why it is so deadly to our fate is that the glory of God is intercepted. We learned that we worship God to give glory to Him. Therefore, to have something other than God in our hearts is eventually established as an idolatry that disturbs worship.
I got my driver's license about 10 years ago. The most important thing I felt in the driver's license practice was that I had to listen to the instructor uh, carefully. If we find a faster way without listening to the instructor because you know how to drive a little, it will only result in lowering your skill. If we drive in the long way, no matter how much you re-alive at our dis destination, it will not be the right training. So, dear members of Hongan English Ministry, it is God who led us all the way here. Therefore, we should give this worship to God <coughs> in its entirety. God is the only one who is worthy of this worship alone, nothing else in us. God is the only one who created us, who gave our sins, and provided us with the strength of our daily lives. When we believe in this and move on, leaning God alone, we will be able to get out of the temptation of idolatry. I hope that through today's word, we will be able to put down any idols in our hearts. So may these words be with all of us who hope to offer the right worship <coughs> worthy of God's will forever. Amen. Okay, so let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us and protecting us during our week and giving us a daily life. We feel grateful in our life you had given us, but we lose this heart every day, every moment. Please give us more power to overcome the temptation from evil one. And let us praise God in every situation we face. Make us more get closer to God through today's word. We learn that idolatry has more danger than we thought. In the story of the people of Israel, we found that anything in our mind can be the idol when it has more priority than God. So we hope that we do not have anything that tempts our heart and we also hope that we worship only God who has given us your grace. Please remember our decision and be with us when we live with this mind as a Christian. We believe that you receive our prayer and request gladly. Thank you, Lord, and love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.